Telegram. All right, welcome back, everybody. This is the Temple Daily Telegram Sports Podcast. Josh Weaver here with Greg Willie. Hello. And Daniel Zapeta. Howdy. And Marcus Hood. Hello. How's everyone doing? Good. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Great. Because yeah, we have we have a lot to talk about. Uh, Happy heading. Halloween. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I ate a Reese's peanut butter cup earlier. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. So that was delicious. You don't need a special occasion to do that. No. It could just be. No, but, you know, yeah. there's more of them around on this day. You know, there's easier access to right. Reese's peanut butter cups. Right. Hopefully but, hopefully Eric got some peanut M&Ms out there somewhere <laughs> trick-or-treating. <laughs> yeah. Yes, his favorite. Well, we have a lot to get to heading into week 10 of the high school football season. And, and I mean a lot. We'll, we'll talk about uh, Temple hosting Hewitt Midway with uh, a piece of the district title, District 12-6A title, uh, for grabs, some seating implications as well, possibly. Uh, Belton is hosting Waco. New quarterback is going to be uh, leading the Tigers into that one. Uh, Marcus is going to have some other playoff uh, news for us. Some of, the, some of the teams can get in this week. Some of the teams can be eliminated from contention. Uh, so we have a whole bunch to get to. Uh, but I think we should start with that uh, Temple and Midway uh, clash that's happening Friday night over there at Wildcat Stadium. Greg's yeah. going to be there. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. You know it. Um, interesting game. I mean, this is, uh, you know, midway uh, slow start this year. I mean, you know, really didn't look too good in the first couple of games. They got a game canceled, so that kind of slowed their progress some. But um, they've really cranked it up in the last five weeks. You know, they're, I think, averaging 55 points a game and just kind of slaughtering the competition. And, um you know, Temple's just gone on and, you know, done what it usually does. I mean, it's a pretty good combination of offense and defense. Um, you know, the thing here in this game is, you know, Temple hasn't been able to beat Midway in four matchups since 2012. So it's a little bit of a, you know, I don't really call it a millstone around their neck or albatross, whatever you want to sure. want to call it. So, you know, Temple, they want to get that monkey off their back. And, um, you know, this would uh, keep Temple on track for maybe a 10 and 0 regular season, which hasn't happened since, uh, since 1983, I think. So that's been 35 years. Um, you know, it, it's it's an interesting matchup. I mean, uh, Midway, I don't think they really try to trick anybody with what they want to do. I mean, James Fulbright, the running back, is uh, one of the harder dudes to tackle and, and uh, you know, just get to the ground. I mean, he's got 34 touchdowns in the last two seasons. He's kind of low to the ground, powerful guy. Um, and and then Nick Jimenez, first-year quarterback for Midway. Um, I don't think he's nearly the playmaker that Tanner Mordecai was the last couple of years, the guy who's at Oklahoma now. But, I mean, he's still running the offense and doing a pretty good job. And uh, he's got receivers, um, big offensive line. And, um, you know, I think – I think maybe the more interesting matchup might be how Temple's offense can fare against Midway's, you know, really good defense because yeah. those guys have serious playmakers. The secondary's really good, yeah. size up front, you know, a lot of experience. So, um, yeah, I tend to think this year Temple's the better team, but I think they they got to go out and prove it. I mean, Midway's not going to lay down or right. play a bad game. Well, that's you know, you mentioned a couple things there. You know, Midway having defeated Temple the last four times. Yeah. Um, you know, Temple doesn't usually worry about an opponent, you know, but yeah. I'm wondering if that has anything in the back of their heads going into this one. Right. And then the other thing, too, I mean, Midway not, you know, tricking or hiding what they're doing I mean, with Fulbright. I mean, I think that has a lot to do with the quarterback play this year, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jimenez has, has done what he can, but... Um, right. They, could, they referred, know, you know, their, their coach, Jeff Hume, described him to me as a, like a game manager. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, shows they don't want to put the game in his hands, no. He'll spread the ball around and do what he needs to do. Uh, Scott Stewart from Temple, he compared Jimenez to Connor Carruthers from from Belton as far as just the guy who throws it well. He's not going to run a whole lot, try not to make the key mistakes. So um, I think Temple's got a lot of offensive firepower that could give Midway some problems. But, uh, uh, you know, this is one of those games that's kind of cliche to say it could come down to mistakes, turnovers, uh, the key penalty here or there. But um, I also think Temple has the potential to win this game by 17 or 20 points. Um, I think it might be closer than that, but uh, I think if you're Temple, you got all the incentive in the world to try to, you know, clinch a district title, keep on pace for the ten and zero. Uh, and by the way, no one wants to play Longview in Longview in the first round. So I think that's that's all the incentive either one of these teams needs right now. Yeah. Well, you mentioned penalties and, and turnovers, and that's something that Temple's had to clean up more so yeah. uh, this season, at least, you know, maybe in the middle part of the season where they've had quite a few of those penalties that set them back a lot, on drives. A lot of penalties. Turnovers and things yeah, like that. Yeah, so. I mean, Jared Wiley, the quarterback, has been pretty good about avoiding the interceptions. He's yeah. thrown a few 
lately, but still I think only three or four for the whole year against, what, 23 touchdowns. So he's been pretty good. I'd look for him to use his legs in this game also a little bit more uh, as a runner. He's a good athlete. He's got big size. So um, we might see Wiley run the ball, especially against a good defense that might not give him as much time to sit back there and pass. He might have to take off and yeah. you know get a couple of key first downs. So I think it's – Maybe it, it could be like that Temple Belton game, honestly. Yeah. I think these defenses won't allow that many points each, but. Uh, well, we didn't think that. Going we didn't think Temple that. So, uh, yeah. Te- Temple's got to. This is kind of prove it time for Temple. And the good thing is, this is their last scheduled home game, but if you can win this one, you're going to get another one in the playoffs. So, yeah, I, I think, think. Yeah, most likely, right? I mean, most. Depending on how other yeah, things go, which yeah. we'll have to sort out. No doubt. Next week. But, uh, yeah, and Cove coming up in the season finale. For Temple at, By the way, at Cove. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's a good Temple could win this game against Midway and then go get knocked off by a Cove team that might be playing for a potential playoff spot yeah. the next week. So, um, uh, got one more stat for yeah. you. Midway has won 32 district games in a row going back to 2013, uh, going for their ninth straight district title. Temple 33 and 2 in their last 35 district games. Only losses were by one point to College Station and overtime to College Station uh, the last two years. So, yeah, um, a lot of success. It's a lot for of these, winning. A lot, a lot of winning. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and both those teams have clinched their playoff spots. Uh, as has Belton uh, at five and one in district, and the Tigers are hosting Waco uh, at Tiger Field uh, Friday night. Um, unfortunate. It's senior night, and unfortunately, one of uh, Belton's uh, leading seniors, uh, its leader on offense, Connor Carruthers, quarterback, won't be playing. Uh, he was injured in the first half uh, last week against Clean Ellison in that record-setting victory for Belton, 86-55. to uh, Single-game school record for points uh, for Belton. Uh, but come to find out, Saturday morning after all that, um, Carruthers uh, separated his left shoulder, had some lim- ligament damage there as well. Uh, Heard it in the first quarter on a run. Uh, still ended up throwing three touchdown passes in the second quarter and 248 yards overall in the first half uh, before coming out and giving way to Ruben Jimenez, who threw four touchdown passes of his own, 250 yards on 9 of 10. And the sophomore Jimenez will be starting uh, for Belton Friday night and for the remainder of the regular season and for you know, as far as they can go in the playoffs. Don't you think the, the interesting thing is like the shoes on the other foot? Last year, Carruthers uh, has to come in in that first game against Temple yeah. uh, for the senior starter. He ends up gaining all that extra experience that helped him this year. Right. Jimenez is going to get probably at least three games, potentially more, yeah. that will help him going into his junior year when you I mean, figure he's got two-plus years as a yeah. starter ahead of him. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a, bo- a boon for him, uh, maybe yeah. not the team, but maybe, maybe yeah. he'll – keep it going a bright side you know in 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 some ways uh for for belton and and jimenez and you know they have they do have the two regular season games before the playoffs as well to kind of get him uh acclimated a little bit more you know one of them is against midway the season finale so you know that'll be a bit of a tougher test than waco but uh you know going back to carruthers really quick i mean he was having uh a pretty remarkable senior year Uh, i'm not sure that you know going into the season that they knew they were going to throw it as much as they were. Um, I mean, he only had 1,300 yards passing last year in, in 10 starts. Um, he he was over 2,000 uh, through seven and a half games yeah. this year. Maybe on his way to 3,000 yeah. potentially. 20, 23 yeah. touchdowns. Um, you know, and, and more so really uh, talking with head coach Sam Skidmore this week, it, it was just his leadership and, and um, you know, what he brought on a daily basis to that program. So obviously he'll be missed, but, um, you know, Skidmore also said that Jimenez um, – uh, is capable. Uh, he, he, he'll scramble a little bit more in the pocket. Um, his arm is uh, out, out, you know, a little bit stronger than yeah. Carruthers, actually. Yeah. Um, um, but it's just more about you know reading the defense and, yeah. and dealing with what's coming at you during a varsity game. Um, I'm not sure he'll be challenged too much this week against Waco, which is winless in district, um, and they've lost seven in a row, I believe. Um, Who's his backup? Uh, Ruben uh, Jimenez, yeah. Uh, Seth Hussey moves into the number two. Um, he, he was the emergency quarterback. Uh, he does the long uh, snapping, I believe, right. right now. But he'll he'll be the backup uh, for Jimenez moving forward. So, but I mean, he, Ruben's got four uh, standout receivers that are going to help him. Um, Anthony Brown, who is nine receptions shy of uh, single season receptions record for Belton, he's got 55 right now. 
Uh, that's according to the stats that we have. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Fairbanks, Denver Holman, Jose Perez, Marcus Aguilar, the running back, has come on strong the last couple weeks. So, uh, you know, his surrounding the surrounding parts yeah. are going to help as well. What about, uh, I mean, Belton, uh, like you mentioned, they've already clinched the playoff spot, but yeah. depending on how the Temple midway game goes, I mean, Belton's not out of the mix for at least sharing district right. title, too. I mean, yeah. it could be a three-way tie in the end. It could be a two-way tie. I mean, mm-hmm. Temple could win the thing outright. Midway could also. But, I mean, Belton's not dead yet in no. terms of the – you know, sharing no. a piece of that, which would be good accomplishment. Yeah, Skidmore, you know, he says, you know, the playoffs are our expectation. Uh, and they, Belton's now clinched uh, five years in a row, which is a program record for them. But, uh, you know, that district title is what they really want. Yeah. Uh, and it's still out there uh, possibly for, for a share, um, which would be their first in, in quite some time. I'm, I, I'd have to look back. But it's been, uh, I want to say at least 10, 2003 10 years. maybe? Yeah, maybe even longer. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, been, it's been a while. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's obviously out there for the Tigers uh, as well, and and I think Friday night, you know, the goal is just to kind of put together uh, a clean four quarters, um, you know, maybe put it out of reach by halftime, get some of those other seniors who don't play as much uh, in the game, and kind of get everybody uh, some some experience. And again, that forward. could be Belton's last home game, but maybe yeah. not, right? Right, yeah, yeah. you know, they yeah. they have they they have the inside track for the number one seed right. into the Division One playoffs, which um, sure. could shape up as a as a number one, I think. It, it kind of depends on the last couple games, I think, with Cove and yeah. Yeah. Temple and you, you would know, think school, that Temple and Midway and would be that. the Division two teams, but Midway is yeah. kind of a swing school. If Coppers Cove makes the playoffs, right. Midway could jump up into and depending on how Cove makes yes. the playoffs, you yes. know, being yes. certain teams or yes. whatever else. But uh, but yeah, yeah, um, a number one seed in Division one likely would give Belton. Uh, another home playoff game, their third straight. It's become a tradition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're one and one in the last couple of years in those uh, split against. And they South already Grand picked Prairie. up an unexpected home game this year when the Round Rock right. yeah, weather yeah. thing happened. Yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've done pretty good uh, at Tiger Field. Yeah, I may be looking at this wrong, but I mean, I don't see how Belton couldn't be the top seed in Division One because they're the largest school in the district yeah. to begin with, and then anybody that could tie them down below them, they've already beaten Cove, Colleen, and Ellison. So if you look at it that way, I mean, there is maybe a three-way tie scenario that could come into play if they yeah. lose out, but they're more than likely going to have that top seed, you would think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're definitely more than halfway I home. I mean, Cove would after, have to but... make the playoffs, and um, and what else would have to happen? Uh, well, I think if they if they beat Temple or whatever and, yeah. and Midway beats Temple and right. all of a sudden Temple has two losses, yeah. then something could happen there. And sure. if Midway beats Belton, I think Midway get. Who would all of a sudden be like a, a big school, right? And that's big school and, and, and tiebreaker, or yeah. or just finishing ahead of them outright. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. yeah, that's yeah. I'm sure that's one reason that Belt wants is hungry for next week too, just yeah. just in case. But Waco is not making the playoffs. No, no, that we know for sure. <laughs> kind of makes me curious. I mean, if you're Belton, <laughs> though, I mean, you look at this. You obviously want that district title, but to get it, take that share of it. You know that. Um, you're going to be facing a midway team next week that's going to be just kind of hungry itself. Yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. One way or the other. Yeah. yeah. Whether they whether they they'll lose either to be Temple coming off a loss Temple, or, yeah. or they'll be going yeah. for an undefeated district championship. Right. So right. Either way, a lot of incentive. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I didn't go over these before, so I'll, I'll read them off now. The other games in the area, and we have we do have some um, some other big ones for some teams. Uh, Thursday night's game in twelve six a. Cove at Colleen Shoemaker. Um, and then the other uh, 12-6-8 game on Friday is Ellison at Colleen, and that's a big one. Um, I think that's Ellison's actually uh, season finale. They have, they have a bye in the last week um, of the regular season. Uh, so that's a big one there. I think uh, and Marcus will go over a little bit of that, um, you know, some of the stipulations in that one. Uh, in 5-4-A-1, Gatesville is at Stephenville, uh, the Battle of the Vills. Um, in District 8, 4A2, Mejia at Salado. Uh, Salado is in a must-win situation for the remainder of the regular season. Uh, in 10, 3A1, Yo coming off its big victory over Rockdale is at Maynard New Tech. Not as big of a game. Uh, Gerald at Rockdale and Troy at Lago Vista uh, in, in that district. Uh, 8, 3A2, Florence is at Rogers. 8, 2A1, Bruceville Eddy at Bosqueville and Axtell at Moody. In 13-2A1, uh, Thrall is at Holland, and Milano is at Rosebud Lot. In 13-2A2, Bartlett at Chiltern, which surprisingly has playoff implications. Hmm. 
And in 14-1A2, Buck holds is at Calvert, six-man action there. And then uh, in TAPS Division 4, District 3, San Antonio St. Gerard at Central Texas Christian. Uh, coming off a uh, their idle week, which uh, was um, right after their first loss of the season. Uh, and this, this is actually, I think it might be a must-win game for them or the beginning of a must-win game for Central Texas Christian and District. And then finally, um, Waco Live Oak is at Holy Trinity Catholic in TAP six-man. Uh, so let's, uh, I, I guess, uh, just real quick, that other 12-6A game, Marcus Ellison at Colleen, you know, what, what can happen there um, with that result? Well, the main thing is the one result that can definitely kind of set things up is if Colleen beats um, blah, 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 Ellison yeah. and Coppers Cove loses to Shoemaker, I guess, tonight, basically, people are listening to yeah, this. Yeah, Thursday, yeah. Then Colleen secures that final spot. Otherwise, that otherwise you have the still potential for the three-way tiebreakers, yeah. the head-to-head tiebreakers next week. Yeah, but that's what happens this week alone okay. in that one. So it looks like if in the case of a three-way tie with Colleen Ellison and Cove, it looks like Ellison will need to beat Colleen by 15 points or more to get all the positive and negative point tiebreakers, where okay. every team would settle in at, at a zero. Because right now, Colleen's a plus 15, Cove's a zero. And Ellison's a minus 15. So, you know, 15's the most you can swing either way. Uh, but there is a chance, I mean, if Ellison comes out and beats Colleen in that, you know, crosstown rivalry, that yeah. all, all teams could be a zero, one and one against each other. And I think in that case, it goes to coin flips, doesn't it? Pretty much, yeah. 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 So that's that's very much out there. But sure. Cove could win its last two games. And, uh, yeah. and if, if Colleen loses to Ellison by any score, Cove could just get in outright. Right. Uh, but they're going to need to beat. Temple and we yeah. yeah that's why I said just yeah. that one scenario that exactly. decides anything this week yeah, I mean, yeah. Colleen's else. in pretty good shape right exactly. now it looks like yeah I mean they have the best chance yeah, yeah. and to get yeah, that fourth spot and there's three spot. yeah there's three teams playing for one spot so yeah. it's going to be kind of fun these next two weeks yeah and I mean we don't pay that much attention to that side of the county too much but it is kind of fun to watch it and see how it plays out we know those Coach Shoemaker's an interesting game I think yep sure um, in five four eight one Gatesville at Stephenville. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gatesville. Uh, what can what, how how can the Hornets get in? All they have to do is win. Okay. Um, it's a five team district. Four get in. Uh, Gatesville win would sec- mean that China Spring, the last place team right now, can't catch them. Okay. So if they win, our Brownwood can beat Bovega. That also secures Gatesville getting in um, for the the same reason. Basically, it wouldn't. Um, it would mean that the worst that can happen is Gatesville ties with China Spring for last, but China, Gatesville would have that tiebreaker. So, okay. so all they got to do is win at Stevenville. It's pretty easy, right? I mean, <laughs> people know. win at Stevenville all the time, right? Hey, it's usually not, Stevenville. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's not easy for sure, but it can be done. And when you when you know what's on the line, hey, because Stevenville's already in the playoffs, so right, I mean, they're just kind of playing for a district title, trying to keep things going there, but. Gage cool. was the one that needs it. Uh, and then I mentioned before, Salado uh, is in must-win mode for the rest of the regular season, I believe. Uh, and they, uh, the Eagles are hosting Mejia. Is that basically right? Yeah, they they have Mejia this week and then uh, Fairfield next week. Yeah. So, yeah, they they have to beat Mejia. If they don't, they're done. And then they pretty much have to beat Fairfield next week. Uh, even as far as I know, I mean, I haven't looked too deeply, but – even those two wins might not guarantee it at okay. this point. Okay. But, but, but one thing in Salado's favor is if they could win this game against Mejia, you know, right now Fairfield's only a game ahead of Salado. Salado can beat Fairfield. Now they got tiebreakers over Fairfield and Waco Connolly that they right. beat earlier this year. So, I mean, at least, yeah. you know, in, in the case of some ties, uh, Salado might be in a good shape there, yeah. but they obviously have to win the games. Which, yeah. Right now that district is uh, in this order Lorena, Robinson, Connolly and Madisonville, and then it's uh-huh. Fairfield and Salado yep. uh, and Mahia after that. So, so Salado's probably rooting for the three teams that it's already lost to to beat everybody else, and then Salado just needs to yeah. take care of its end of things. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then in ten three a one, I want to bring Daniel in real quick because he was at the Battle of the Bell last week. Uh, Yo and Rockdale, 
And um, wake up, Daniel. How yep. was it, Daniel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How basically, that, that's basic. That's the basic <laughs> question: was how was your first battle of the belt? But um, Yo and Troy have clinched uh, playoff spots uh, out of that district, and two spots can actually um, get clinched this week in one game. But we'll get to that in a second. But I just wanted, you know, what stood out to you uh, the most, or what couple things stood out to you uh, from that game last week between Yo and Rockdale, which Yo won. Right. Um, we've covered Yo a couple of times this season. Um, they're they're for real. Um, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone who's really kept up with them this year. Um, you know, they had the kind of the down year last year, but they've come back in uh, full force this year. All season long, they've been talking about how balanced they are on offense, and I think Josh, me, and you were talking about their offensive stats earlier today. And between the passing and the rushing yards, there's only about a 30 yard difference yeah. between the two. So yeah, I, mean, I think that, it's I think it's 15 17 rushing and 15 47 <laughs> yeah. passing. So, so I mean, I mean you really don't <laughs> yeah you really don't get much more uh, right down the middle than that. But um, they they really did. Um, you know, it was an emotional um, game. You know, they have the Battle of the Bell game um, at Cameron uh, Yo Field again. Um, they wanted to win it this year. Obviously, both sides wanted to, um, but Yo really got the job done. I was expecting more offense in that first half. Um, you know, Yo took the first possession of the game, drove it right down the field, and scored the opening touchdown. Um, but then for most of the first half, it was really just kind of a, a punning fest, just uh, back and forth. I think through the first two quarters, both teams combined for like eight punts or something like that. So not a whole lot of action there. Both defenses standing real tall and strong. Um, Yo did get a touchdown there right at the very end of the first half to lead 14 to nothing. Going into the break, which was big for them, I thought, um, really kind of let the air out of uh, Rockdale. Um, but then again, Rockdale comes right back out to start the second half. They score a touchdown to get in it. Um, I think um, Yo throws an interception um, to kind of shift the momentum, but Rockdale can't do anything with it. Um, it kind of went back and forth there for a little bit. Um, I think at one point it was 20 to 14, so you really got a sense that maybe Rockdale could make it three in a row, which would be the first time they did that since the, the mid to late 60s. Um, but Yo really kind of turned it on there in the um, fourth quarter there. I think they outscored uh, Rockdale 13 to nothing over the final 12 minutes, so really kind of put their foot on the uh, pedal. Um, Nico Vargas had some big runs. Uh, Braden Brashear, quarterback for Yo, really had a strong game. He was 18 for 22, over 200 yards passing. I think a crucial touchdown there at the end to Kobe Young. Um, that really kind of sealed it. So it was electrifying, as everyone could kind of expect. Um, you know, like you said, my first time being at that game, um, definitely kind of lived up to the hype. Didn't see the 80 points or even the 60 points that it had produced the past couple of years. But uh, for my sake, having to keep up with the stats and the box score, I'm, I'm okay with that. Right. Um, but it was definitely competitive. Both teams, it really was a playoff atmosphere. You know, uh, Cameron Yo really wanting to continue to play well so they can secure that district title. Rockdale, um, I talked to uh, head coach Jeff Miller after that game, and he said from here on out, every game they're pretty much playing for their playoff lives. Um, they lost to Troy the week before. Troy probably will secure that second spot in the district. Um, Rockdale will probably take the third, but it's by no means guaranteed, so they got to make sure they take care of business the rest of the way. Marcus will cover that um, moving forward, but um, definitely a great game. It lived up to the hype. Um, but Cameron Yo, um, you know, you load the box against them for the run, they'll just pass it on you. And then if you try to play them straight up man to man, uh, they've got a couple of running backs back there that can really do damage. And they are, they're really tough to solve on um, offense. And then their defense, too. I mean, they've got guys that can make plays all over. Their linebackers are great. Their defensive line gets to the quarterback, provides pressure there. Um, they should, if they live up to the potential that they have, um, take care of business to end the regular season, they could very likely put together a strong postseason run. It's interesting, you know, going into last year, people had Cameron Yo ranked number one in the state, and they ended up go, having a losing record and not even winning a playoff game. This year, nobody's really talking about Cameron at all going into the year. Right. And this could end up being a team that, you know, maybe contends for a state championship, at least goes, you know, into December possibly. Yeah. You know, who knows? Not yeah. to sell them short, but uh, just interesting how expectations yeah. are not met and then – way exceeded you know one year to the next but uh cameron's expectations are always high so yeah the yeoman definitely uh trying to prove that last year was 
a bit of a Tommy Brashear, he's fine with no rankings. Right, he, yeah. he, didn't, right. he didn't like yeah. all that preseason yeah. hype. He just wants to play football. Rank us last. He and matter. Jeff Miller both. Yeah, and, he, right. and he just helped his uh, popularity rating in Cameron a lot by winning that game. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, just two years just, in a row. Just, his, <laughs> just his inner peace, probably, <laughs> yeah. as well. Like, yes, his towel. He probably hadn't slept great. that cheap. well. Yeah. You know. <laughs> he said it was great just to finally get that monkey off his back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you're in Cameron and you're like, you can win a district championship, but if you don't beat Rockdale, they're thinking you're having a bad season. And the fact is that his son quarterbacked him to that first win as head coach, that's got to be yeah, a nice, gotta, uh, yeah. nice touching family yeah. moment. Extra special there. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Dan, you, you, you mentioned Rockdale uh, being in kind of playoff mode the rest of the regular season. And uh, as it turns out, Gerald at Rockdale has some of those postseason uh, uh, implications. Yeah, basically, um, Rockdale – has kind of the upper hand here because if if they win, it kind of sets all the playoffs in that district. There, they're in. Academy is definitely in. Academy's in a good spot too, but basically Rockdale just needs to win to get in. And if they do, Rockdale and Academy become the other two teams. And then basically next week would probably Academy and Rockdale would probably determine where they finish. But um, there can still, you know, if, if Gerald wins. Um, even though Academy beat Gerald 38-13. to So basically what you'd be looking at next week would be a possibility of another three-way tie between Gerald, Rockdale, and Academy if um, yeah. if Gerald wins this week and, and Rockdale beats Academy next week. So then you have to consider all the, the point scenarios. And we haven't looked into that district yet to figure out exactly what the cap is. Um, it's normally either 17, 14, or 19. But, um, well, I mean, of course, the, the you know Gerald's having a, a, a yeah. decent season for them. You know, right. uh, obviously a lot better than the last couple of years, but it would be a, a pretty massive upset oh, yeah, if, yeah. if, if yeah. Cougars beat Rockdale. It would be about like Waco winning at Belton on Friday night. Right. right. Uh, I want to go that. <laughs> and, all, and, all, and all the Tigers knocking on wood right yeah. now. Yeah, because I mean, I, hey, I, you I, discredit Waco at your own risk. If, if you looked at Gerald at the beginning of the season, I mean, you're thinking this is yeah. a team that's coming along and maybe scored some points. They could contend. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I thought. You know, that loss to Troy took the wind out of their sails. It seemed like that yeah. forty-five to yeah. two, or yeah. you know. Yeah. But I kind of thought maybe they'd make the playoffs this year. They had something going. Maybe there's one one more season away. We'll see. But that's what they're that that is. That's where that district stands. <laughs> we did not slow the sound down right there. That was Marcus slowing his special own self down. Um, all right. <laughs> Uh, moving along uh, out of that district into 8382 with Florence at Rogers. Uh, Rogers has already uh, guaranteed itself its first 500 or better regular season since 2014, I believe it is. Wow. And uh, let's see, Marcus with a win um, or a loss by Hamilton, uh, Rogers yeah. can get into the playoffs. Yeah, uh, for the first time in a couple years, and, and, and the last time they got in, they were like three and seven in the regular season. This would be a little bit uh, better than that. Oh yeah, a lot better, I would yeah. think. Yeah, and, and this is not a bad Rogers team by any means, and they're they should uh, make the playoffs. Even well, you don't want to say even with the loss to Florence, because if you lose to Florence, it does kind of make it a little bit difficult. Yeah. Since that would, that would muddy it up a little bit, right? But yeah, another five team districts, so four teams got to get in, so. A Rogers win, our Hamilton loss would guarantee that Hamilton, the fifth place team, cannot catch Rogers. So there's the, that's where that one stands. I'm just going to throw out a little round table, quick topic here. We're at a rectangle table. Okay, yes. With a little extension yeah, on L. one side. It's a very stylish <laughs> yeah. 1972 yeah. type desk. <laughs> Four teams in the playoffs, um, especially at the smaller classifications. Um, and then you only have maybe five or six teams in the district. I mean, is this is this a good thing? I mean, that's not that's not something to throw out <laughs> in a podcast that's already at twenty eight minutes. I mean, well, what do you mean? I thought you said as long as we keep it under forty, we'll be okay. I know, okay. but I, I kind of want to go home at some point. <laughs> I mean, that that could take could be here all night. an extra ten minutes. But I mean, you know, it, that's it's that's fun. a good question. I mean, it's a good debate. Um, you I know, mean, for a long time in in five A, six A, or well, back when five A was the biggest, I and mean, they were only taking yeah. two teams or then three teams. Now we're taking four in. Basically, what was two A football? You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll say this, yes. and we can move on. Yes. And these guys don't have to say a word. <laughs> but I'll say this: when you have four teams making the playoffs, no matter how small the district is, the week ten, the week eleven games, they mean something. I sure. mean, you're watching them. You're not. Right. You know, when basically before that, it's like one game might mean something. 
otherwise every everybody was already set. So yeah. now you've got games that you have a good pick of games in these final weeks to go to and watch. Yeah, yeah and you'll get people to with the argument of the more more the merrier. You know, let's get more teams yeah. the chance this and that. But well, and to be honest, a, how how often does a fourth seeded team beat the number one seed in a by district game? Probably not very often. Like Academy is probably gonna have a really tough matchup in the first round if, if they yeah, we you know make to, it. So yeah, I'm not yeah. sure in this area. How yeah, that, how yeah, I tried to look that up goes, like last year. Right, yeah. it was more than I thought it was, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it can happen. It's nothing against the teams that make it. It just seems a little diluted. But hey, it's a lot. The superintendents and UIL agreed to it, so yeah, who's yeah. to slight the guys right. who make it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, another area team uh, on the brink here is Bruce Villetti. Uh and they're at Bosqueville this week. Yeah, that's a um, a tough task in itself. Yeah, Bosqueville five and three overall, four and zero in district right now. But Bruce Valetti could clinch a playoff spot this week. Um, okay. They have to win and either have Itasca defeat Riesel or Moody defeat Axel. Now the chances of any combination of those two things happening may not be that great, but right. there's still a chance. And Bruce Valetti, even at 3-2, and two, kind of in third place in district right now, their backs are definitely up against the wall, having lost to Edley with some tough games ahead of them still. So yeah, they're definitely – I mean, if they win this one, it's huge, and it definitely puts them in a, a good spot next week for a playoff spot. Yeah. Going to have to score some points to beat Bosqueville because they're yeah. usually pretty explosive. Yeah. Well, technically, you kind of score points to beat anyone. Right, right, at least two. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Bosqueville's 4-0 in district. I mean, after uh, – I think they, they had a pretty uh, difficult non-district schedule. Uh, yeah. I know some yeah, of those matchups were, were pretty pretty uh, yeah. high level. But um, uh, let's see, 13-2A1, Thrall at Holland and Milano at Rosebud Lot. Uh, Holland, uh, I believe, can get a piece uh, – clinch a piece of the district title this week with a victory. Uh, and at the same time, they can avenge one of their only what well, they only have three losses last year, and one of them was to Thrall, I believe. So uh, they can do a couple nice things over there yeah. um, in Holland on Friday night. Uh, Holland already uh, in first place and clinch a playoff spot at four and zero in district. Thorndale's four and one. Holland beat Thorndale, so you know if Holland wins out, obviously they're going to have that outright district title. Right. Uh, and then in that other game, Rosebud Lot. Um, needs to get going here with a couple games left. Yeah, they're uh, they could be out this week if they lose and either Hearn beats Marlin or Thrall beats Holland. Yeah, that, that Hearn Marlin game probably will. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Rosebud Lot definitely needs to win because the loss more than likely in pretty much all scenarios would eliminate him this week. And It's kind of been a rough season, a lot rougher than Brad Ballard would like to have, I'm sure, over there in Rosebud Lot, but they might get it going this week. We'll see what happens. It's yeah, not, that's that's kind of. I mean, it's a good matchup against Milano. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, Milano's right there in the middle of the district, uh, two and two, so it's not you know heavily favored one way or the other. Former yeah. Telegram area team Milano. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you go back far enough, yeah, we used to cover you, Eagles. Sorry, <laughs> I know we still have a couple of readers out there, but yeah. Um, and then moving down uh, in one of those games where. Uh, you know, <laughs> the last two m- can mean something. This Bartlett at Chilton. Uh, what do we have here? How many How many wins between them? Oh, zero. And 15 uh, losses. Yeah, 0 and 15 uh, combined overall and 0 and 4 combined in district. Both are 0 and 2. But it's a five-team district, and one of those teams has to get in. How many points has Chilton scored overall this season? Uh, we have them with 77 overall. And Bartlett? Uh, 24. But Chilton's given up more points than Bart. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but yeah, that's like we're saying, that's a five team district, and one of those teams is, is going to get in. Yeah, and if Bart wins, they've got the spot locked up. Um, uh, Chilton could win and still not get in the playoffs just because um, next week I think it, it's Bart and Iola. And what that would mean if Bart wins is that the Chilton would already lose to the two teams they could technically tie with ahead of them so Bartlett hey you haven't won a game but you win this one you're going to the playoffs now's the time yeah kind of like Salado so. over Smithville a few years back yeah, right. they were winless going in and won that last game and yeah somehow sometimes got to play that's all it takes man just 
with that one win, maybe you get something. You never know what happens in the playoffs. Well, most of the time. You do, but. <laughs> but you can always say we went to the playoffs. Yeah. Sometimes. You Make know shirts and all that. But it would be a heck of a time for Bartlett to score, like, double-digit points maybe and win a game. Yes. <laughs> they haven't scored a point yet in district, though. So, what did you say, Daniel? How, how long has it been since they scored? 15 quarters. Yeah, that's, that's a long time. But week 10, it's almost like a playoff game right, right yes, in front of them. So that's – at least that's nice. I, you know, you have, you have a chance there. <laughs> yeah. Kind of tough to see Bartlett kind of on skid Yeah, row that's what right you were here. saying last week. You know, there's one of those you know, one a, of those teams that's, that's a, kind of hung around as one of the state's best in their classification yeah. for, for a good amount of years. Of course, that's been a while now. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, I as, mean, as yeah. recently as, what, four or five years ago, they were still – Pretty competitive, pretty good. Uh, it's just hit, yeah, that, hit a down run of talent, yeah. I guess. Well, that and mainly it's because they're. I mean, it's a it's a class two A school that technically has six man numbers, right? right. So it's always going to be a little bit of struggle. And you know, I think there's a little, too much pride in Bartlett to kind of go down to that six man level. And I mean, you got to change your field. You got to get coaches that know the game. But their scoring would probably go way up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You'd hope so. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on. Yeah. yeah. No, but, you know, the, moving down a classification, you know, is not – communities don't really want that. I mean, that's right. like 1A to 6-man or even, I mean, where I worked before this, yeah. 6A to 5A or whatever, pe- people fight against, you know, that type of thing. You, know, you had some travel considerations out there in yeah, West Texas yeah, too. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> uh, you know yeah. some of those teams – and those communities, they, they want to be that higher classification mm-hmm. no, no matter what, yeah. just based on. Preserve rivalries yeah, and all stuff, that stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so like you said, you know, week 10, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, on the college level, UMHB plays its uh, regular season home finale. They'll be back for the playoffs at Crusader Stadium uh, for a few games at least. Could three, have three or four maybe. Could have a maximum of four yeah. at Crusader Stadium and a fifth one in Texas, maybe. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Uh, that's that's Saturday. But um, any, anything else before we sign off here? I don't think so. We touched on quite a bit. I feel very happy with this recording. Daniel's got his Good. first Battle of the Bell out of the way. Yeah. Good. Yeah. He's matched my total of one Battle of the Bell game yeah. covered. Mark has oh. probably been there a few a few times. Yeah, our, our last tidbits a bit. usually uh, features for the week or for the upcoming – Papers, Temple, yeah, senior defensive tackle slash nose guards, Trey Colbert and Philip Haskins, both of whom have fathers who played defense at Temple. Cool for Coach Bob right McQueen. At Belton's is going to be receiver Anthony Fairbanks, another one of those playmakers for the Tigers. Uh, fun guy to talk to. Really energetic on the field. I think Temple's defense is still having some nightmares of Quite Anthony possibly. Fairbanks. Yeah. He, running through yeah, there. He, he went off that game, and he also had a good game uh, last week against Ellison. And then we got a cross country uh, player of the week, athlete of the week, excuse mm-hmm. me, uh, coming up on Friday. Uh, and that state meet, cross country state meet, is Saturday. Um, they don't give them much time from district to regional to state in no, cross it, country. It, do it, they? it moves right along. It's Actually, great. they just run the entire time. Yeah, yeah. They go, they run themselves to the district meet, and then they run to the regional site, and then they've been running since. And they show up it's every, not only a sport, rock. it's a mode of transportation. Yes. Yeah, I could never do it. <laughs> I don't know why we would want to. Yeah, give me a bike or a car, please. <laughs> well, we got quite I can't a few. Run. We got maybe one of those scooters. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah, we have a bunch and we have a defending uh champion uh down there as well too. Mm-hmm. So a uh, lot going on this week. If she wins again, she gets to go back to Chile. That's right. right. Yeah, the the, yeah. the favorite post race meal. Some Dr. Pepper and a burger. It's nice. We might go get some of that right <laughs> now. Good. And the, the, the 12 people listening to this podcast have no idea That's what okay. they're talking Yeah, but about. people love hamburgers and Dr. Pepper, so it's cool. And look at that, 38 minutes and 47 seconds. So what do we do for the next minute? The longer I talk, the longer this gets. Goodbye. Daniel, insights. Oh, no, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>